All right, Dirk Knutson, Rivals.com, out here at Northwest Stars Camp, and I got with me Colt Lyerla, Oregon Duck. Uh, Colt, how are you? Um, I'm doing well, and it's a nice uh, sunny day out here in Camas, Washington. So. Uh, so you came up uh, from Eugene today. You got a call from some former Oregon Ducks. Uh, came up and helped out at a youth camp. Uh, a lot of fun out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was nice to come out here and uh, get back to the roots and uh, see where it all started and began. And, uh, you know, to give back a little bit to the, to the young generation, so I'm happy. A lot of the kids, uh, you know, pulling up wanting your autograph and stuff like that. Have you gotten used to that at this point? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's a plus. It's a plus to the gig, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, just to be a role model and uh, uh, just come out here and, uh, you know, just see the kids have fun. And it's, 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 yeah. It's good thing, so. so let's go back a little bit in your uh, career as a football player. I think I first saw you in sixth grade. I started getting phone calls as a, as a writer and a, and a youth coach around the west side of Portland and hearing about you. Um, what were some things in youth that kind of helped you develop and then, uh, you know, as, as high school went along? Uh, we, all, we obviously know a lot about what happened with you, but uh, did you go to stuff like this when you were a youth kid? Yeah, uh, I tried to, uh, you know, convince my parents to take me to as much of this stuff as possible, you know. Uh, I think uh, just the consistency of it and, uh, you know, just coming out and, and, and getting better at something, you know, throughout the year uh, mm -hmm. is what kept me going. So, yeah, I was definitely involved in camps like this throughout the year. So definitely helped your talent along, and then of course you, you had every kind of training there could be that helped your talent to develop. You were here today with, um, let's see, we had Damon Griffin, Kenny Wheaton, uh, Josh Wilcox was out, a great Oregon tight end like yourself, um, and uh, who did I leave out? Uh, John. Well, John Charles was here, yeah. Um, anyway, some Oregon Duck greats, great to see you guys work together. Um, have you gotten a chance to know some of these guys on a personal level? Um, just only uh, Josh Wilcox, you know, um, we, we've got to talk a few times and uh, it was nice out there talking to him today. And, yeah. and it, it was my first time meeting Kenny and, and, and John Charles. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, they're great guys. And it, it's great to come back and uh, be with uh, veteran Ducks and, and do things with them, you know, as, as the younger uh, generation yeah. of Ducks. And um, you know, those guys take the way for us. Yeah. And, uh, so it's good to come out here and help them out. Uh, let's talk about Josh Wilcox uh, for a little bit. You've had a chance, obviously, to get to know him. Um, many people feel, you know, greatest tight end to come out of Oregon you're going to be right in that discussion um, has Josh uh, you and Josh talked a little bit about what might happen from here on out for you uh, yeah you know we've talked several times over you know over the past um, you know my tenure here at Oregon and uh, you know, I've got to know him and uh, he's it's a uh, I mean he's just been a great uh, guy and role model for me you know I mean I think that just comes with the, the Oregon tight end uh, tradition and legacy that we have and um, you know it's great to come out here and help him out and, and help out uh, Kenny Wheaton and John Charles and, and Damon Griffin and those yeah, guys. Yeah. So we had uh, we had some real duck uh, power out here today, and it's it's been great to see these guys get back involved in the community. Um, Kenny's down in Texas and doing his thing, training and stuff. And you think after uh, after your football career is over, wherever that might end up, you'd like to come back and, and have a chance to work with kids. Yes, uh, definitely. You know, I mean, I think that's the the greatest part about this game is that uh, people become successful at it and uh, come back and and give back to the game and, and yeah. keep it going. So I want to definitely play my part in that. Let's talk about your season ahead. Big, uh, big announcement that you were nominated for uh, on the John Mackey uh, nomination watch list for that most prestigious award as a tight end. Um, when did you find out, and what did that mean to you to to, to have that kind of an honor bestowed upon you? Um, yeah, I found out. You know, um, as soon as the list came out, you know, a couple weeks ago, and you know, I was pretty, I was pretty stoked about it. You know, I was, uh, you know, it's been a long time. Um, you know, and, I, and I'm glad that I'm able to represent my university in that way and, sure. uh, and, and be nominated for that type of award. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. You're a younger guy, and like most young guys, it's it's hard to know who's you know super current, let alone who played. But you had a chance to to look up some things on on Coach on John Mackey as a player and all the things he did. Are, are there some things that stood out about his career that um, you feel you know would be good for you to try to emulate? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, first and foremost, with the John Mackey Award itself, I mean, that just shows exactly how players can give back to the game. Um, you know, he, him and his family have done a great job of spreading awareness about, you know, uh, the effects of the brain that the game, right. that the game has brought. Really important. And, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's very important. And so, um, you know, just having a guy like that uh, showing, showing uh, you know, younger generations how it's done. Sure. I think that's why it's such an important award. So. A lot of tight ends are known for blocking over their size or their ability. You kind of bring that whole package, the ability to catch and run. You know, here's a guy that catches 338 balls and, and pushes almost 6,000 yards and 38 TDs. Explosive offensive player, has a lot of the same physical traits you had. Um, 
looking forward to, to your career. Um, do you think that uh, that's the way you'd like to be used um, both this year and then going forward? Yeah, I mean, if I could get my name up there with uh, Mr. John Mackey, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be an A+. plus. So, you know, if anything I can do to, you know, try to emulate that and uh, you know, just be in the game. Right on. How are things looking for the Ducks? We'll close it up with that. I know uh, it's going to be your third year there, right? Yeah. Um, Marcus Mariota back. Black Mama back, Thomas Timer coming in. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. The, the sanctions are over. Has that lifted any kind of a cloud or anything over the program? Are the guys feeling like they're just ready to tear it up? You know, that hasn't even been on, on our mind, you know, as, as players. You know, we just, um, I mean, we're just re so ready for this year. I mean, we're, we are so psyched for this year to just come out and prove everyone that, that it wasn't just, you know, about, about the coach, about the right. program, you know. So, right. you know, we're excited to come out and improve a lot of people right into so. All right, Cole Ayrola, thanks for taking the time. It was really great to see you in the community. I hope uh, you get a chance to see you back out here. I know it's, it's hard being a student athlete, but thank you so much for coming out, Cole. Yes, thank you for having me.